I'm Megan Blanchett with O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Philip Zellerger, who is a software engineer at Cloudera. Thank you for being here, Philip. Thanks for having me. So, starting out, with the complexity of distributed systems, how often do you find companies do not have the systems in place for debugging? Yeah, so what we're sort of seeing is sort of this inversion, right? Where you used to have lots of systems on one machine, now we're sort of inverting it, and you have one system that crosses a bunch of machines. Um, and that's kind of new, all of our sort of traditional tools, whether they're configuration management tools or monitoring tools, have this vocabulary built in where like a service is uh, per machine or multiple services per machine, and now we're inverting it, right? Uh, the HDFS, the Hadoop Distributed File System, runs on 100 machines, right? Um, and all of a sudden, you sort of have a different sort of understanding of what you know, problems are. Um, when you're troubleshooting that, a lot of the time you're looking at trying to find outliers, right? Is one machine behaving really poorly? And how can you figure that out, right? Um, and you're often trying to understand the interactions between those machines. You know, so one machine having trouble communicating with a different machine. So you have to sort of invert your world where you're not looking at a single machine and sort of digging deep, deep, deep down. You have to first understand like which machine you need to do those tools on. Eventually, you know, same old tricks. Uh, you sort of dig into a, um, a single process. But until then, you got to figure out where to go. Why do you think that debugging is typically more reactive than proactive? You know, mostly it's because, you know, the developer systems are very different, right? So especially in, um, you know, in our data center, big data space, right? Um, when I'm building a, a product, I might be building it on my laptop. You know, maybe I have two, five, ten virtual machines, right? Uh, but then when that product, that data product, expands into the data center, right? Um, it's a whole new situation. There's you know, different switches, there's networking, you have different neighbors, right? So a lot of stuff happens because uh, you have bad, loud neighbors, right? So um, we've been doing a lot of work recently at Cloudera to tackle some resource management problems. And the, the basic idea there is, okay, you've got this H-based application over here, you've got these MapReduce jobs over here. Can you make it so that the, they both continue functioning? Even if, you know, there's all of a sudden MapReduce is really busy, right? So you, you know, you build, uh, I, you build soundproofing into the walls, right? So that you can't hear your neighbors, right? You sort of, you ex exchange some, you know, you make a trade off. You lose some capacity, but you're more tolerant to that kind of failure. Um, so a lot of the really interesting problems just happen in production. And besides, you know, finding which machine is messing up, mm -hmm. what are some of the pain points in debugging? Yeah, so the, you know, the pain, there's, there's sort of a couple, but the, the main idea is there's all these layers, right? So you might have an application which then um, issues solar queries to do search, which then, you know, read their indexes from HDFS, which then are reading their underlying data from hard disks, right? And some of the trickiness is, you know, you might understand one stack, one part of that stack. You know your application, you know Solar really well. But it takes a while to get all the way down. You know, do you, how well do you know the disk diagnostics tools, right? Or maybe the networking tools. Um, there's some good stuff emerging here. The, uh, the best work uh, that I sort of sorely miss in open source land, and there's some work that's getting there, is the distributed tracing stuff. So the basic idea is, kind of having a log of who's talking to whom, right? So, uh, you know, your application talked to Solar, Solar, Solar then talked to a bunch of data nodes, data nodes talked to hard disks. If you could then go back and see, okay, over here, this one communication took one minute. Everything else took like under 100 milliseconds, but this one communication like clearly like timed out, aired out, something was going on. Like, oh, okay, that's huge, that's an outlier. I'm gonna go figure out why that thing was there. Um, and there's some good work going on. So then, you know, it's been done over and over again. X-Trace from Berkeley, Dapper is the Google version of this, Zipkin is the Twitter version of this. And actually there's some work right now which I'm really excited about, integrating HBase and HDFS with Zipkin, so we have some some chance. There's sort of, um, you know, if you're ever working on only one layer, right, um, and Hadoop is so diverse and has so many frameworks in it, if you're working on one layer, you don't really need this, you can get away without it, you can read log files, uh, but the, the jumping through layers bit is where this stuff's really useful. 
And I know you said that it's kind of missing in open so source land, these other things going on, but what has your team at Cloudera been doing to deal with the various yeah. annoyances that come up? Well, right, so my team at Cloudera is the Cloudera manager team. And what we're doing is we're saying, look, there's a whole bunch of Hadoop deployments out there, right? Um, all of our customers are running Hadoop, and we want to make it so that they're all running Hadoop in a monitored, alertable, comprehensible, diagnosable way, right? Um, it helps us a lot that, you know, I used to joke that, you know, we had X customers and three X um, ways of installing Hadoop. And that sucks for everyone involved, right? So it helps a lot with, you know, having repeatable stuff. And it helps a lot with, um, you know, if a customer runs into something in, you know, today, in 2013, by the time, you know, a year from now or two quarters from now, you know, some update of my product will, um, will sort of incorporate that problem. So a lot of problems we, you know, we code and we talk to the developers and we're like, okay, tell me, you know, what does it mean for HDFS to be unhealthy? Uh, and we program that into the software and we tell you, hey, you haven't done, you know, the secondary name node hasn't checkpointed um, in more than an hour. That's probably bad, you know, red alert, red alert kind of thing. Um, and then other problems, you know, we'll run into in the field and that'll get in incorporated. So a lot of our focus has been on, you know, first of all, sort of getting the configuration management and sort of the model of the system going, um, and then getting the monitoring. The, um, you know, really powerful thing we've been doing a lot recently is giving advanced users the ability, the ability to ask questions of the monitoring data. So they can say, okay, show me disk usage. Now show me disk usage for all the hosts, right? and plot that separately, plot that together, the reads and the writes, um, and then you can sort of dig in, look at a histogram, find an outlier, right? Some of the same stuff that people are doing, um, you know, in terms of big data analysis, right? There's a bunch of visualization companies, you know, more concentrated on the, you know, monitoring space that, that I'm working on. And if you could personally mm -hmm. fix one problem out there with big data tools, what would it be? Yeah. Uh, the stuff I'm really excited about is there's a whole bunch of new um, uh, sort of government social initiatives going on, right? Um, obviously, healthcare is in the news. Um, there's a bunch of public policy stuff going on. I think that's you know that's a place where you know our city is becoming um, smarter in terms of what's going on. New York City does a whole bunch of stuff. San Francisco does a whole does a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, so you know, understanding you know. Simple things, but could you, you know, could you improve transport? Could you improve? These aren't actually not simple things at all. Very complicated things, right? But now we have, we can leverage a little bit more data and see, okay, you know, why is it that the buses are getting backed up? That kind of stuff. What do you think your first step would be to fix such things? Uh, I think finding out. <laughs> so there's a parallel of like finding out how like wrong and naive I am, right? That's sort of the. You know, you approach these things from an outsider and you're like, oh no, lots of people have thought about this. Totally uh, full of it. There's like, there's a bunch of research on it and sort of data collection, right? And that's our bread and butter, right? Collect all the data and then try to sort of build, build on it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you.